Thank you so much. Uh, awesome, we're live. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch with all of you. Uh, you guys are sometimes, I think, better riffer than the guys. How you doing? I'm very glad to have shared Accelerator with you. It was a lot of fun to make that movie. Sammy Jones is a very fun dude to work with. Um, and I'm really glad that all of you got a chance to get a sneak preview because um, for independent filmmakers, you know, like me, I'm really lucky to just be able to have an audience. And Rift Tracks and Mystery Science Theater have a lot to do with um, giving me an audience. So if you have questions, just hit me up. I'm having trouble reading them, but I'll do the best I can to read them and uh, answer your questions if you got any. Yeah, but he asks about Sean Young. Um, Sean Young, actually, um, she has a reputation for being tough to work with. She was a little tough the first few days. And, um, you know, the fact of the matter is, is once she started to trust me as a director, then she was really easy to work with after that. You got to understand, Sean Young was really big in the 80s, and she was um, been around for a long, long time. So, actually, she was, um, you know, she was actually pretty easy to work with. We became friends after she... She worked um, with us after we got through the first day. Everything worked out really well with her. Um, there's you guys had a lot of great riffs. I was laughing my my ass off last night, um, and uh, you know I don't know one particular riff that you guys did, but I will honestly say you were. It was almost as good as watching it with the guys. We'll have a physical release um, the end of the month, I believe the thirtieth. It'll be out on Blu-ray and DVD. Um, the, the accelerator prop was actually a guy who manufactures lightsabers from Star Wars out, out of aluminum. And um, he was supposed to make it a certain thing, but he just sent, sent us a ton of parts. And we just um, put it together and um, based out of uh, lightsaber parts from this guy who made Star Wars lightsabers. So um, how much... Uh, so pretty much we reused, because I own Icebreaker, we reused a lot of the... Nothing involving the actors, Sean Astin or anybody else, because you can't do that legally. We reused a lot of that footage. We reshot the whole, the, the last snowcat chase, which I never quite got the way um, he was he was with. Uh, Sam Jones was fantastic. Somebody made a comment that uh, he's a low budget Anton Chigurh, and um, true story that when I talked with Sammy, I said, "Have you seen the the movie New Country for Old Men?" And he said, yeah, brother, yeah. And I said, Sammy, you see him in the movie. He's like that in the movie. He, um, he, I said, it's Anton Sugar. You got to play it like unhinged. And then he did what you saw in the movie, which I really had no control over, and I just wrote it. So, um, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun work with him, and we're friends as well. Um, and I do have a lot of fun, and I thank you for all the kind comments you guys are sending. I do have a lot of fun watching it. I don't take what I do too seriously. Um, who is the uh, Asai guy? Can someone tell me this? I, I, maybe I missed that from... Um, everybody's mentioning the Asai. Is that the Asai... Uh, you know, the Asai guy. What was it like to work with Bruce Campbell? Bruce Campbell was great. Um, very, very um, professional actor. Knew his lines. If something wasn't right, he was very, very on point about why is it not right and how do you fix it. Um, and... Uh, He's a guy when the size. Oh, he must have been a bad guy in Radical Jackie, the side guy. Bruce Campbell, though, a lot of fun. Guy doesn't suffer fools. Um, yeah, I figure all you guys are going to call me out on Icebreaker and everything else anyways. So, you know, you're an audience who knows my filmography better than anybody else. And so uh, I might as well get it out right now, and everybody's going to know anyways. Um, but, yeah, Bruce Campbell, very cool guy. Um So music was done by David Stahl. Um, it's original composition. We don't can't always afford that with low budget films. I thought he did a really good job. We we intentionally tried to make it sound like John Williams. He did a he did a really good job with the soundtrack. Um, you know, and again, these films are made on really low budgets. And um, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that you know I was lucky to get a composer who would give it as much time as possible. So, that from Andrew was an essay. Yeah, I yeah you know, I missed that. Um, that's Rusty Deweese. Then he's the SI guy. Rusty Deweese is a Vermonter who also does stage shows here. Um, and I've actually interestingly killed Rusty Deweese in four different films. We didn't find that out till later. Um, 
but uh, uh, Icebreaker 2, there was supposed to be an ice, actually was supposed to be an Icebreaker 2, and the plan was that we were going to film it in the opposite. It was going to be called Icebreaker 2 Meltdown, and uh, we were supposed to film it in the Caribbean, actually in the Bahamas, and we were ready to go, and the people who did not, who financed the first Icebreaker did not want to, this is a true story, did not want to finance the second Icebreaker, even though, even though they made a crap load of money. Um, and I ended up getting the rights to Icebreaker because they eventually went bankrupt because they took the money from Icebreaker and financed a little movie uh, with John Travolta called Battlefield Earth. You've probably heard of it. Um, sequel to Accelerator, I don't know, it depends on how it does. Um, the budget on Accelerator was um, more than we should have spent and nowhere near enough, you know? Um, so. Yeah, Battlefield Earth, that's a true story. We literally were on our knees with the investors. Literally, me and producer Peter Beck were out in LA trying to get them to do a sequel to Icebreaker. Um, and they just, you know, threw, uh, threw. I have no idea it was on that VHS tape. I'd have to think about it for Bruce Campbell. Um, I, it was a plot point about uh, his manifesto about the world, I think, in Icebreaker, but I'm not sure. Um, you know, there was there was never there was never anything recorded for that VHS tape in in, uh, in Icebreaker, um, and I'm not sure. Uh, what the, I, I think the point was it was supposed to be some kind of manifesto or something like that, and uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, the film uh, I, uh, Accelerator has already been. It's already out in. Let's see, Australia, New Zealand, the Middle East. Um, we're waiting on the UK release. Um, and uh, it's there are other countries that'll be coming out soon, but I know that it's it's been released in Australia and New Zealand already. So um, sometimes when you so <laughs> make something up, I'm to, <laughs> if I come up with a better answer about the VHS tape, I'll let you know. Um, the the cast of Time Chasers and I are really uh, close to. We all actually live within an hour of each other. Um, People ask about Time Chasers 2 all the time. Uh, I don't, they all have real lives. George Woodard's a dairy farmer, Matt Brew's a carpenter, Bonnie Pritchard is a teacher. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we actually, um, we tossed it around 2016 when Rift Tracks did the live event. Um, we considered that, we talked about it and they were, they were pushing me on plots and I have had synopses, but I don't think Time Chasers 2 um, is, uh, it, yeah, everything in Vermont is, within an hour or two from everything else anyways. Um, but uh, no, I don't think there's gonna be an icebreaker too. Just just because I can't, there's there's no way to recapture what we did. Um, I mean, Time Chasers too, sorry. There's no way to recapture what we did, um, the innocence of what we did. And I, I wouldn't wanna do a straight up parody. You know, what we do, uh, at least with what I'm trying to do with Accelerator is be kind of guileless, but have a certain amount of fun with the movie. Um, but I don't think you can really, you can't fake cult and you can't fake that kind of, um, you know, uh, you, you, you can't fake being culty. It just either happens or it doesn't. So um, so we do what we can. And I do love the Rift Tracks community and thank you for all these nice comments that are coming so fast. Um, what famous chin would I like to work with Nance? I don't know. You know, I liked working with Bruce Campbell. I'd love to work with Bruce again. Um, you know, I don't know why I pick actors with strong chins. I guess that's a thing. So, uh, hmm, that's weird. Um, yeah, you know, Bruce was a good guy. I'd love to do something else with Bruce in the future. Um, and Sam Jones, you know, he was a lot of fun to work with, and he did make up a bunch of stuff uh, that's an accelerator. And so, I, you know, um, I'd love to work with him again as well. So, Billy Ray Cyrus, really nice guy. I didn't direct uh, Radical Jack. I produced it, and I directed Second Unit. Um, Billy Ray is sweetheart, very nice guy, was his first acting role. Um, he was really good. I don't think it was, it was his best acting role, but he was really good. He was really sweet in the movie. And yes, I did get to meet Miley Cyrus, who was on set for about a week. Um, and, uh, and she was a little tiny thing. So it was, you know, um, everybody was, you know, it's funny. A lot of the crew were very young, had not seen Flash Gordon. So they didn't know who Sam Jones was when uh, we made the uh, the movie. Um, so we brought Sam Jones on set and where I was in awe of him because I was a huge, I had a Betamax tape of Flash Gordon. Um, and they were making another documentary and there's a documentary out there called Life After Flash about that whole thing. And um, a lot of the crew didn't know. And actually some of the main crew, crew members 
didn't even know who Sam was till after we finished filming. It was really funny. Um, and I don't know where my Betamax went, but if that was my very first Betamax I ever bought was Flash Gordon, so it's ironic to be um, here at this point. So, um, those wait you're still upset over the waitress uniforms and Radical Jack? I don't know. I just produced it. What can I tell you? Um, those Betamax player, play, players are worth a lot. Um, the, the grin, Sam's grin, um, it's funny. He said to me early on, Sam Jones said, uh, um, he said, my kids tell me not to smile because it makes me look creepy. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. So, um, Burt Ward, really funny guy, loved working with Burt. Um, Burt Ward would tell you, well, he's now, when I worked with Burt Ward, he was telling stories that were wildly inappropriate in a restaurant we were eating together about being Robin uh, and it being the 60s and his sex life. And I won't say much more, but he has a book out now if you want to get all the, the gory details with that. Linnea Quigley was, was, was a sweetheart as well. Um, Miles O'Keefe was great as well. Um, you know, yeah, Sam did have as much fun and there'll be outtakes coming out where you'll see some when the when the camera's not rolling sam is having a lot of fun so when uh, probably the blu-ray and the dvd coming out um you know it was uh it, you'll see how much fun sam had accelerator was shot in only nine days um and uh with a with a bunch of post-production and i think four or five days of second unit shooting as well um so uh it, it was it was a tight tight shoot a lot of fun Yes, more green screen than I wanted to do. Wouldn't do it that way again, but um, that was the only way to get the cast through this type of movie. Uh, and uh, and it's probably one of the lower budgets. I, I haven't had to work on a budget this low since Time Chasers, Diamond Run, Pressure Point, because the business has changed. So, um, you know, uh, I really, I love, thank you so much for all the nice comments. Um, I really appreciate it. And Woody is a very close friend. I've known him for a long time. And uh, the part was kind of written for him. So, um, yeah, did you notice a green? Everyone have a drink every time you saw a green screen? So <laughs> that'd be good. Um, yeah, this, the, the, the Sahara, actually, they were, they were standing on a pile of sand in front of a giant green screen in a parking lot. Um, so there's actually some green screen in there that uh, most people don't notice. So, you know, it's interesting people don't like green screen, and I don't like green screen. Um, but sometimes you have no choice, and sometimes you do it and people don't notice it. So filmmakers uh, like me are really cagey and we don't uh, talk about it. Uh, but I noticed, I can tell from the comments, a lot of you didn't see any green screen at all. So, um, yeah, no talking cat. So um, Dave Dakota, and by the way, I met him, very nice guy. Um, it, tough though, a lot of contemporary indie filmmakers or B-movie filmmakers like me, and you're seeing a lot of kind of the stuff that we used to make back in the day, you know, the early 90s and even the early 2000s, that is... Um, a lot of the guys making movies aren't making movies anymore because the economics of it have changed and got tougher and tougher, which I think is going to be tougher for Rift Tracks and Mystery Science Theater. Um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen post-coronavirus. Um, I'm in Vermont, so my office, um, you know, is, is not far from my home, so, uh, and there's nobody here. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. I think everybody will come back, and I think... It's important with the coronavirus that, uh, and that was why it was important for everybody to just have a good time and watch Accelerator now. Um, what are you gonna do? You're gonna stay home as much as you can. Eventually people will come back together and I think eventually we'll survive this. Um, I think we are gonna be the same. I, I, I think people may change. I think maybe we'll be bowing instead of shaking hands, but um, you know, things change anyways. Video stores are gone. Um, but um, the internet is here and Accelerator was my first all digital movie so um, you know uh, thank you we love I love you guys too you fans are wonderful so um, and I hope you enjoyed the escape and I think you'll be fine and I hope you do all stay home and you stay safe um, and you protect each other and be good to each other and um, it is, the, the switch to HD is a problem for our older titles because, um, you know, the, the, they don't want the, the new uh, delivery mechanisms all want HD now. So some of these older titles like Icebreaker and some of the older stuff we have, we are doing a new release of Time Chasers scanned from the original Interpositive uh, at the, the end of this year. Um, and, uh, and thank you, I know, Time Chasers too. 
Um, so it'll be coming out soon. Yes, I've worked with Lloyd Kaufman. Actually, when I got started, one of my first jobs, uh, one of the first jobs for, Ed Excel for Edgewood was we were cutting trailers for Lloyd Kaufman. Uh, Lloyd's a very fun guy. I know him, I know him pretty well. Cut mm, probably 20 or 30 trailers for him back in the early 90s. Um, we tried to, and actually Lloyd Kaufman at Troma turned down distribution of Time Chasers, which he has told me many times since that he regrets. You used to see him at the American Film Market every year because his booth was near my distributor's booth and uh, old Lloyd, old Lloyd who's, who's not uh, doing that anymore, but his company's still around. And um, Lloyd's a good man, um, but he was a sweetheart. I remember going back to his office three years after I met him and he still had a little Time Chasers poster on the wall down in New York City in Hell's Kitchen where his place was. So, But he's a good man, good man. So thank you all for watching. I got a jet um, and uh, Laura is, Laura James, by the way, fantastic. Um, she's in SWAT on CBS right now. Ryan Racine, um, who's the male lead, another fantastic young actor I think you're gonna be seeing a lot more, more of. And um, John James, my friend, and Max Caulfield, both from Dynasty and the Colbys. And uh, yes, Roscoe, I'm taking care of. I'm going home to him right now. So, uh, and uh, thank you all for the great comments. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoy the preview. And um, hope you all are home safe, and your loved ones are safe, and uh, you all be well, okay? Thank you, and thank you, Rift Tracks fans. And I do sincerely appreciate it and enjoy it when you guys get to watch our movies, all right? Have a great weekend. Have a good time. Bye-bye. If I turn this off. Well, I don't know how to turn it off. Let's see. People watching me trying to turn my phone off. Hawks! Uh, uh, well, that didn't work. End. Okay, I found out how to say end. Thank you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>